Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. It's like he was just putting the pieces together for me in such a way that just was simple but powerful. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is God's truth right here. It wasn't always what I, what I wanted to hear, but I knew it was the truth, and I always wanted the truth. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm in the middle of a teaching talking about the Word became flesh. That's a quotation from John chapter 1, verse 14, and I hadn't got to that verse yet. I've been building up to it. We're going to ultimately be talking about the virgin birth of Jesus and helping you to understand what a huge miracle this is and why it had to happen. This is one of the questions I used to ask when I was a kid about, you know, God's God. Why did He have to become a man? Why did He have to suffer and be rejected and crucified? I thought, He's God. He could do anything He wanted to. No, He couldn't. And this is a concept that just rattles a lot of people because they think that there's no limits on God. God can do anything. No, God is bound by His integrity, by His Word. And when He created mankind, He gave us the control of this earth and said, you deal with it how you want to. He never intended for us to yield to the devil and disobey him, but when we did, he didn't just come down here and wipe us all out and start all over. That would have been unjust. He he gave this earth to mankind to use as they saw fit. Now, I'm, I'm getting into some things right here that I really would like to encourage you to go back to Monday's broadcast and watch this whole thing. I BELIEVE THAT WHAT I'LL SAY TODAY WILL BLESS YOU, BUT IT WOULD MAKE A LOT GREATER IMPACT IF YOU WERE TO GET IT IN ITS CONTEXT. SO YOU CAN GO TO AWMI.NET AND YOU CAN WATCH ALL OF THESE PROGRAMS THAT I'VE DONE THIS WEEK. YOU CAN ALSO GET ALL OF THIS MATERIAL THAT WE'RE OFFERING THAT YOU CAN SIT AND STUDY IT. BUT I'VE I've BEEN TALKING ABOUT THAT THERE WERE LIMITS UPON GOD. AND SOMEBODY SAYS, THAT'S BLASPHEMY. LET ME USE A VERSE OVER HERE IN PSALMS CHAPTER 78. GOD SPOKE THIS TO ME ON JANUARY THE 31ST, 2002. IT'S PROBABLY THE SECOND MOST IMPORTANT ENCOUNTER THAT I EVER HAD WITH THE LORD. AND IN PSALMS CHAPTER 78, VERSE 41, IT'S TALKING ABOUT THE CHILDREN OF ISRAEL AND REHEARSING THE THINGS THAT HAPPENED. AND IT SAYS, YEA, THEY TURNED BACK AND TEMPTED GOD AND LIMITED THE HOLY ONE OF ISRAEL. THIS IS A SCRIPTURE THAT SAYS YOU CAN LIMIT GOD. DID YOU KNOW GOD WANTED THEM TO COME OUT OF THE LAND OF EGYPT, AND THEN THERE WAS THIS TIME AT MOUNT SINAI WHERE HE GAVE THE LAW THROUGH MOSES AND ALL OF THAT, BUT IF THEY WOULD HAVE DONE ALL OF THOSE THINGS, HAVE BUILT THE TABERNACLE AND ALL OF THIS, IT WOULD HAVE TAKEN ONLY ONE YEAR WHEN HE TRIED TO GET THEM TO GO INTO THE PROMISED LAND. BUT BECAUSE OF THEIR DISOBEDIENCE, THEY DISOBEYED GOD, AND THEY SPENT 40 YEARS IN THE WILDERNESS. THAT WASN'T GOD'S WILL. WE KNOW THAT HE TOLD THEM THE REASON HE BROUGHT THEM OUT WAS TO BRING THEM INTO THIS PROMISED LAND. BUT IT DIDN'T COME TO PASS, AND THAT GENERATION DIED, AND THEY NEVER DID RECEIVE IT. GOD NEVER INTENDED FOR THEM TO DIE IN THE WILDERNESS. IT WAS BECAUSE OF THEIR DISOBEDIENCE THAT THIS HAPPENED. SO I USE THIS JUST AS AN EXAMPLE. THERE'S MANY OTHERS. SECOND PETER CHAPTER 3, VERSE 9 SAYS, GOD IS NOT WILLING THAT ANY SHOULD PERISH, BUT THAT ALL SHOULD COME TO REPENTANCE. YOU CAN'T MAKE IT ANY CLEARER THAN THAT. THIS IS THE WILL OF GOD, THAT NOBODY PERISH, BUT THAT EVERYBODY BE SAVED. AND YET JESUS SAID THAT THERE WOULD BE MORE PEOPLE ENTER BY THE BROAD GATE UNTO DESTRUCTION THAN BY THE NARROW GATE UNTO EVERLASTING LIFE. SO JESUS HIMSELF SAID THAT GOD'S WILL ISN'T COMING TO PASS. IT'S GOD'S WILL FOR EVERYBODY TO BE SAVED, BUT NOT EVERYBODY IS SAVED. AND JESUS SAID THAT THE MAJORITY WOULDN'T BE SAVED. NOT BECAUSE GOD WILLED IT, BUT BECAUSE HE GAVE US A CHOICE. AND SO GOD'S WILL DOESN'T JUST SOVEREIGNLY, AUTOMATICALLY COME TO PASS. I'VE HAD SO MANY PEOPLE CRITICIZE ME OVER THIS VERY ISSUE, AND I'VE HAD PEOPLE COME UP AFTER I TEACH ON THIS AND SAY, THAT'S OF THE DEVIL. YOU'RE OF THE DEVIL. YOU SHOULDN'T BE SAYING THESE THINGS. GOD CONTROLS EVERYTHING. GOD IS SOVEREIGN. YOU KNOW, IF YOU WANT TO USE SOVEREIGN THE WAY THAT THE DICTIONARY DEFINES IT, WELL, THEN I'LL AGREE. GOD IS SOVEREIGN. THE DICTIONARY DEFINES SOVEREIGN AS FIRST IN RANK, ORDER, OR AUTHORITY. GOD IS SOVEREIGN IN THE SENSE THAT HE'S THE TOP OF THE FOOD CHAIN. HE IS ALMIGHTY. NOBODY IS GREATER THAN GOD. AND IF YOU WANT TO USE SOVEREIGN THAT WAY TO DEFINE GOD, I'M COOL WITH THAT. I'M GOOD. 
BUT RELIGION HAS REDEFINED SOVEREIGN TO SAY THAT HE CONTROLS EVERYTHING, THAT NOTHING HAPPENS BUT WHAT HE WILLS IT. THAT'S NOT TRUE. THAT'S NOT WHAT THE WORD TEACHES. THESE PEOPLE DID NOT COME OUT OF EGYPT. GOD'S ORIGINAL PLAN WASN'T FOR THEM TO DIE IN THE WILDERNESS. THAT HAPPENED BECAUSE THEY DISOBEYED GOD AND THEY REFUSED HIS PLAN. THERE'S THINGS HAPPENING TO PEOPLE TODAY THAT IT'S NOT GOD'S PLAN. YOU KNOW, THERE WAS A MAN, I'VE BEEN ON HIS TELEVISION PROGRAM WITH HIM. I'M NOT AGAINST THIS GUY, BUT HE BELIEVES IN THE SOVEREIGNTY OF GOD TO AN EXTREME TO WHERE GOD CONTROLS EVERYTHING, AND IT DOESN'T MATTER HOW BAD IT IS, GOD ORCHESTRATED IT. AND HE WILL EVEN SAY THAT SOMETIMES MAYBE GOD DIDN'T DO IT, BUT GOD ALLOWED IT. Uh, I HEARD HIM SAY THAT SATAN IS LIKE A DOG ON A LEASH. HE CAN ONLY GO AS FAR AS GOD WILL LET HIM GO. THOSE ARE ALL CONCEPTS THAT ARE CONTRARY TO SCRIPTURE, AND THEY ARE ALL UNDER THIS BANNER OF SOVEREIGNTY OF GOD. THEY SAY THAT GOD CONTROLS EVERYTHING. AND THIS MAN, I'VE BEEN ON HIS TELEVISION PROGRAM. HE INTERVIEWS PEOPLE, AND I SAW HIM INTERVIEW A WOMAN WHO THIS WOMAN AND HER DAUGHTER WERE BOTH ABDUCTED AT GUNPOINT AND TAKEN OUT TO A REMOTE AREA, AND THE GUY RAPED BOTH OF THESE WOMEN AND THEN HAD THEM LAY ON THEIR STOMACH AND SHOT THEM IN THE BACK OF THE HEAD. AND IT KILLED THE DAUGHTER. THE WOMAN SURVIVED. SHE HAD SOME PHYSICAL PROBLEMS WITH IT, BUT SHE DID SURVIVE. AND SHE WAS BEING INTERVIEWED ON THIS PROGRAM, AND THEY WERE SAYING, WE DON'T KNOW WHY GOD ALLOWED THIS TO HAPPEN, BUT WE KNOW THAT GOD HAS A PURPOSE FOR EVERYTHING AND THAT GOD IS SOVEREIGN. AND I TELL YOU, I GOT SO MAD WATCHING THAT THING, I NEARLY KICKED IN THE SCREEN ON MY TELEVISION. THAT IS MISREPRESENTING GOD. GOD DID NOT CAUSE THAT MAN TO GO RAPE TWO WOMEN AND KILL ONE OF THEM, TRY AND KILL BOTH OF THEM. GOD DOESN'T DO THAT. THIS IS NOT GOD THAT CONTROLS EVERYTHING. AND PEOPLE SAY, WELL, THEN HOW DID IT HAPPEN? BECAUSE GOD GAVE US A FREE WILL, AND PEOPLE GIVE THEMSELVES OVER TO THE DEVIL. I DON'T BELIEVE THAT MURDER AND RAPE AND THINGS LIKE THAT HAPPEN ACCIDENTALLY. YOU HAVE TO CROSS A BUNCH OF BARRIERS. YOU HAVE TO BREAK THROUGH A LOT OF THINGS THAT YOUR CONSCIENCE IS RESTRAINING YOU FROM, AND YOU JUST HAVE TO GIVE YOURSELF OVER TO DEMONIC POWERS TO GO OUT AND RAPE AND PLUNDER AND DO THE THINGS THAT PEOPLE DO. I'M NOT SAYING THAT SATAN ISN'T A FACTOR. HE IS A FACTOR, BUT HE DOESN'T HAVE THE POWER TO FORCE US TO DO THINGS. GOD GAVE US A SELF-WILL. HE GAVE US A CHOICE. IT SAYS IN DEUTERONOMY CHAPTER 30, VERSE 19, HE SAYS, BEHOLD, I CALL HEAVEN AND EARTH TO RECORD AGAINST YOU THIS DAY THAT I HAVE SET BEFORE YOU LIFE AND DEATH, BLESSING AND CURSING. THEREFORE, CHOOSE LIFE THAT YOU AND YOUR SEED MAY LIVE. IT'S LIKE GOD'S GIVING YOU A QUIZ. DO YOU WANT LIFE OR DEATH, BLESSING OR CURSING? (laughs) THAT OUGHT TO BE A NO-BRAINER. YOU OUGHT TO BE ABLE TO CHOOSE LIFE AND BLESSING OVER DEATH AND CURSING. BUT JUST IN CASE YOU STRUGGLE WITH TRYING TO FIGURE OUT WHICH YOU WOULD RATHER HAVE, HE GIVES YOU THE ANSWER. HE SAYS, CHOOSE LIFE THAT YOU AND YOUR SEED MAY LIVE. HE EVEN GAVE YOU THE ANSWER TO THIS QUIZ. BUT GOD GAVE YOU THE CHOICE. HE SAYS, I GIVE YOU THE CHOICE. IT'S WRONG FOR YOU TO SAY, THE DEVIL MADE ME DO IT, OR IT'S WRONG FOR YOU TO SAY, WELL, GOD CONTROLS EVERYTHING. LET ME JUST PUT IT TO YOU THIS WAY. DOES GOD CONTROL YOU? DOES GOD CONTROL EVERYTHING THAT YOU DO? ARE YOU WILLING TO BLAME GOD FOR EVERY ROTTEN THOUGHT THAT YOU HAVE, EVERY ROTTEN ACTION THAT YOU HAVE, EVERYTHING THAT YOU'VE EVER DONE? ARE YOU SO BOLD AND AUDACIOUS THAT YOU WOULD BLAME GOD FOR EVERY SINGLE THING THAT YOU'VE DONE? I BELIEVE, YOU KNOW, WE'VE GOT 3.2 BILLION PEOPLE THAT CAN WATCH THIS PROGRAM ALL AROUND THE WORLD. AND I BET YOU AT LEAST 3 BILLION, SHOULD BE 3.2 BILLION OF THOSE WOULD HAVE TO SAY, NO, GOD DOESN'T CONTROL ME LIKE A ROBOT. YOU KNOW THAT SOMETIMES YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO GO THIS DIRECTION, AND YET YOU JUST CHOOSE TO GO THIS DIRECTION. YOU KNOW IT. THERE'S TIMES THAT YOU KNOW YOU AREN'T DOING THE RIGHT THINGS. THERE'S TIMES THAT YOU KNOW YOU SPEAK ABOUT PEOPLE AND YOU DO THINGS, AND YET YOU DO IT ANYWAY. SO LET ME ASK YOU THIS. IF GOD DOESN'T CONTROL YOU, WHAT MAKES YOU THINK HE CONTROLS EVERYBODY ELSE? AND THAT EVERYTHING ELSE THAT HAPPENS IS JUST AUTOMATICALLY GOD'S WILL. I TELL YOU, THIS IS A RELIGIOUS DOCTRINE AND TRADITION THAT LIKE MARK CHAPTER 7, VERSE 13 SAYS, TRADITIONS AND DOCTRINES OF MEN MAKE THE WORD OF GOD OF NONE EFFECT. AND THIS IS A RELIGIOUS TRADITION THAT HAS uh, DAMNED A LOT OF PEOPLE. IT'S DESTROYED A LOT OF PEOPLE. 
You know, I'm not going to mention a name right now, but I could mention the name. There's a person that most people would know who I'm talking about, and they were raised Presbyterian. And this man and his sister were very close. The sister got sick. He prayed that God would heal her, and she didn't get healed. She died at a young age, and when she died, the pastor of this Presbyterian church came over and said, well, we know that God needed an angel in heaven, that nothing can happen but what God wills, and that this is God's will. And they blamed God. I think that that's... I believe the reason people do that is because it takes responsibility away from us. We don't have to say, well, I wasn't standing in faith or whatever. It just helps us to put everything in a nice little box and organize it. And if something happens we don't understand, well, God must have a purpose. God works in mysterious ways. And we just blame God for anything we want to. You know what it did to this man? It made him so angry at God. He says, if there is a God, I hate him. And this man today owns one of the largest television networks in the world, and he has stated that his purpose is to turn people away from a Judeo-Christian ethic because somebody blamed God for the death of his sister. And he says, if there is a God, I hate him, and he's doing everything he can to turn people away from God. Now, he calls himself an atheist or an agnostic now, but he started out believing in God, but God was misrepresented. This is what Satan did over here in Genesis chapter 3. This is where I was trying to go today, and all of the things I've said right here are introduction. But on yesterday's program, I was showing how that Satan used the craftiest animal, not the mightiest, not the most uh, dangerous or intimidating animal to come and tempt Adam and Eve, because he couldn't force them to do anything. All he could do was come with a lie and deceive them, and they had to willingly yield unto him. And so Satan came against them, and he challenged the Word of God. Has God said? I tell you, this Bible is the greatest gift outside of Jesus and the Holy Spirit that God ever gave mankind. This reveals who God is. It tells us God's ways. I believe everything in here from Genesis to maps. Amen. I believe it all. This is awesome. And yet there, the majority of people today do not have a biblical worldview. That's based on surveys done by George Barna. And I think that in America, there's only like 13% of the people who claim to have a worldview, but when you ask them questions and it doesn't line up with the Word, there's only about 6% of the American population that has a biblical worldview, and yet something like 60-something percent would claim that they're Christians. 38-something percent believe that uh, they are born again, that they have a personal relationship with the Lord. And yet out of those people, very, 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 very few people let the Bible get in the way of what they believe. And that's the reason they get into sin. Satan could not get Adam and Eve to sin until he got them to question the Word of God. God had said in Genesis chapter 2 and in verse 17, it says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. He said, you will surely die. Don't eat of this tree. You will surely die. Satan came and said, Did God really say that? Boy, there's so much in this. But did you know, if he would have approached them, let's just say that there was a thousand trees in the garden that bore fruit that they could have eaten of. If Satan would have come and he said, has God only allowed you to eat of 999 trees? The very wording of that would have diffused the temptation because it would have shown, look how good God is. Out of a thousand trees, you can eat of 999. There's only one thing in all of the universe that God told you not to do. If that's the way he would have approached this, it would have been easier for Eve to just say, but look at how good God is. I don't know why he told us not to eat of one, but he's so good giving us the 999, I don't care. And they could have just ignored this. But no, Satan didn't come and remind them of the goodness of God and how great God had been to him. He pointed out the one thing in the garden, the one thing in the universe that God told them to leave alone. And this is what he does with us. You know, it says over in 
Uh, 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 11, HE SAYS, I FEAR LEST AS SATAN BEGUILED EVE THROUGH HIS SUBTLETY SO THAT YOUR MIND SHOULD BE BEGUILED FROM THE SIMPLICITY THAT'S IN CHRIST. THE APOSTLE PAUL WAS SAYING THE SAME WAY THAT SATAN TEMPTED ADAM AND EVE IS THE SAME WAY HE TEMPTS US. HE DOESN'T COME AND TELL YOU ABOUT HOW GOOD GOD IS. HE DOESN'T REMIND YOU THAT GOD HAS DONE SO MANY GREAT THINGS FOR YOU. HE WILL POINT OUT ONE THING IN YOUR LIFE THAT'S WRONG AND GET YOU TO OBSESS OVER IT AND JUST FOCUS ON IT AND THINK ABOUT WHAT YOU DON'T HAVE INSTEAD OF ALL THE GOOD THINGS THAT YOU DO HAVE. HE'S DOING THE SAME THING THAT HE DID HERE WITH ADAM AND EVE. AND HE CAME AND TEMPTED THEM BECAUSE HE HAD NO POWER TO FORCE THEM TO DO ANYTHING. I WAS MAKING A POINT OF THIS YESTERDAY ON MY PROGRAM THAT SATAN CAN'T DO ANYTHING TO YOU WITHOUT YOUR CONSENT AND COOPERATION. THEREFORE, YOU HAVE TO... YOU HAVE TO YIELD TO THE DEVIL. AND IT MAY NOT BE THAT YOU YIELD THROUGH JUST EMBRACING HIM AND LOVING THE DEVIL AND LOVING EVERYTHING THAT IS AGAINST ALL OF THE PRINCIPLES OF GOD, BUT YOU COULD YIELD TO HIM THROUGH FEAR. YOU CAN YIELD TO HIM THROUGH IGNORANCE. I WAS TALKING ABOUT THAT THERE'S RELIGIOUS TRADITIONS THAT MAKE THE DEVIL THIS POWERFUL, HUGE FORCE, AND CHRISTIANS, BECAUSE THEY'VE BEEN MISINFORMED, AND THEY THINK THAT SATAN IS A SUPERIOR BEING TO THEM, WHICH IS NOT TRUE. HE HAS TO USE YOUR HUMAN AUTHORITY. HE CAN'T COME TO YOU WITHOUT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER DECEIVING YOU AND GETTING YOU TO OBEY HIM. IF YOU HAVE A MISUNDERSTANDING OF HIM, THEN IT'LL CAUSE YOU TO RESPOND IN FEAR, AND SATAN WILL HAVE ACCESS. YOU KNOW, LET ME GIVE YOU AN EXAMPLE OF THIS THAT MANY, MANY YEARS AGO, I WAS ON A FLIGHT FROM COLORADO SPRINGS TO PHOENIX, ARIZONA, WHICH WAS ABOUT AN HOUR AND A HALF FLIGHT. AND THIS IS BACK BEFORE THEY, YOU KNOW, BANNED SMOKING ON PLANES AND THINGS LIKE THIS. AND ANYWAY, I WAS ON THERE WITH A MAN WHO WAS AN ASSOCIATE OF MINE, PHILIP MOORE, AND HE SAT ON THE AISLE SEAT. I WAS IN THE MIDDLE SEAT. AND OVER HERE IN THIS WINDOW SEAT, WAS A MAN WHO uh, WAS A MESS. I MEAN, HE WAS A CHARACTER. HE HAD ON A, a FRENCH BERET HAT. HE, had, he WAS RED-HEADED. HE HAD A LONG BEARD THAT WAS DOWN TO HIS WAIST, AND THE THING WAS DIRTY. IT HAD CLUMPS IN IT. HE HAD HAD TO CUT SOME STUFF OUT OF IT, AND THERE WAS GAPING HOLES IN HIS BEARD. AND HIS FINGERNAILS WERE LIKE AN INCH LONG, AND THERE WAS GREEN AND YELLOW CRUD UNDER THEM, AND HE HAD ON A FIELD JACKET. HE STUNK. AND HE HAD AN ATTITUDE. WHILE WE WERE STILL SITTING AT THE GATE, HE SMOKED TWO CIGARETTES. THIS IS BACK WHEN THEY ALLOWED CIGARETTE SMOKING ON THE PLANE. BUT YOU WEREN'T SUPPOSED TO SMOKE AT THE GATE. THAT WAS AFTER YOU GOT IN THE AIR. AND THE stewardess CAME BACK AND TOLD HIM TO PUT OUT HIS CIGARETTE, AND HE JUST CUSSED HIM AND YELLED AT HIM. AND HE WAS SO INTIMIDATING, THEY LEFT HIM ALONE. SO HE SMOKED THESE CIGARETTES BEFORE WE EVEN TOOK OFF. AND THEN AFTER WE TOOK OFF, I STARTED TALKING TO HIM. AND ASKED HIM A FEW QUESTIONS. AND WHEN I ASKED HIM, I SAID, WHAT KIND OF WORK DO YOU DO? THIS GUY GOES, WORK? HE SAYS, WHY SHOULD I WORK WHEN THE GOVERNMENT PAYS ME, YOU KNOW, WELFARE uh, TO NOT WORK? HE SAYS, THIS CAPITALISTIC SOCIETY HAS TO HAVE 10% UNEMPLOYMENT TO MAKE IT WORK. AND HE JUST STARTED, YOU KNOW, TALKING ABOUT HOW HE GOT HIS FOOD OUT OF TRASH BINS AND ALL OF THIS KIND OF STUFF. SO I STARTED TALKING TO HIM AND I SAID, LOOK, GOD CREATED ADAM AND EVE TO WORK. HE TOLD THEM TO DRESS THE GARDEN AND TO KEEP IT. YOU KNOW, I HAVE 26 ACRES ON MY PROPERTY, AND I GUARANTEE YOU, I WORK CONSTANTLY TRYING TO KEEP uh, THAT PROPERTY TAKEN CARE OF. THEY HAD AN ENTIRE GARDEN. WHO KNOWS HOW BIG IT WAS. THEY HAD WORK TO DO. THEY HAD SOMETHING TO DO. AND I STARTED TELLING THIS GUY ABOUT THE BENEFITS OF WORK. I SAID, YOU'D FEEL BETTER IF YOU DID SOMETHING WITH YOUR HANDS, IF YOU COULD SEE THAT YOU WERE MAKING A DIFFERENCE. INSTEAD OF JUST BEING A TAKER, IF YOU WERE A CONTRIBUTOR IN HELPING OTHER PEOPLE, YOU'D FEEL BETTER. AND MAN, HE DID NOT LIKE IT AT ALL. AND HE TURNED AND WAS LOOKING OUT THE WINDOW, AND I JUST KEPT TALKING TO HIM ABOUT THE LORD. FINALLY, THIS GUY, HE JUST TURNED AROUND, STUCK HIS NOSE RIGHT UP AGAINST MY NOSE. AND HE YELLED AT ME, AND HE SAYS, YOU ARE SPEAKING TO A DISCIPLE OF THE MAHARISHI, AND HE GAVE OUT THIS NAME. I CAN'T REMEMBER, BUT IT WAS A LONG NAME FOR SATAN. I FOUND OUT LATER IN THE CONVERSATION, HE WAS A SATANIST HIGH PRIEST UNDER ANTON LAVEY. HE CLAIMED TO HAVE KILLED HUMANS AND CUT THEIR HEART OUT AND OFFERED THEM AS HUMAN SACRIFICES. AND HE WAS, HE WAS DEMON-POSSESSED. YOU COULD SEE IT IN HIS EYES. AND HERE HE WAS, RIGHT IN MY FACE, CHALLENGING ME. NOW, LET ME ASK YOU, HOW WOULD YOU HAVE RESPONDED TO THAT? 
You need to think about this. And there's a lot of you who are maybe even Christians, but your first thought would have been absolute fear, panic. You would have grabbed Philip. Oh, Philip, let's pray. Let's ask God for protection. See, if you respond in fear, Satan can't do anything to you without your cooperation. Fear of the devil is cooperation. BUT INSTEAD OF ME RESPONDING IN FEAR, I MEAN, IT JUST MADE ME MAD. THIS GUY CHALLENGED ME. AND SO HE BACKED OFF SOME, AND HE WAS LOOKING AT ME WITH THIS TERRIBLE LOOK ON HIS FACE. WELL, I GOT RIGHT UP AGAINST HIS NOSE, AND I YELLED AT HIM, AND I SAID, YOU ARE SPEAKING TO A DISCIPLE OF THE LORD JESUS CHRIST, AND MY GOD'S BIGGER THAN YOUR GOD. AND WHEN I SAID THAT, HE TURNED FROM BEING THIS INTIMIDATING PERSON INTO ABSOLUTE FEAR. HE ACTUALLY JUMPED UP IN THE SEAT, PUT HIS BACK AGAINST THE WINDOW, AND PLASTERED HIMSELF AGAINST THE WINDOW AND STARTED BARKING LIKE A DOG AND DOING THINGS. HE ACTUALLY BIT HIS FINGERNAIL AND PULLED IT OUT BY THE ROOTS. AND MAN, I JUST STARTED LAYING INTO HIM. I SAID, YOUR GOD IS A LOSER. I SAID, WHAT A lo- WHAT AN EXAMPLE FOR HIM TO SIT NEXT TO ME, A PERSON WHO GETS THEIR FOOD OUT OF TRASH CANS. AND I SAID, YOUR GOD'S A LOSER. YOU HAVE NO POWER OR AUTHORITY. HE SAYS, I COULD CURSE YOU AND YOU'LL BE DEAD IN A SHORT PERIOD OF TIME. AND HE TOLD ME HE HAD OFFERED ALL THESE HUMAN SACRIFICES. AND I JUST QUOTED TO HIM PROVERBS CHAPTER 26, VERSE 2, WHERE IT SAYS, THE CURSE CAUSELESS SHALL NOT COME. I SAID, SHOOT YOUR BEST SHOT, BUDDY. CURSE ME. I DARE YOU. IT'LL COME BACK ON YOU. (laughs) AND HE JUST PANICKED. YOU KNOW, THERE WERE THESE TWO LITTLE FILIPINO LADIES THAT WERE SITTING IN FRONT OF US. AND THEY WERE SO SHORT THAT THEY COULDN'T SEE OVER THE SEATS. BUT WHEN THIS WAS GOING ON AND HE WAS BARKING AND DOING ALL THIS STUFF, I SAW THEIR EYES COME UP ABOVE THOSE SEATS LIKE THIS. AND THEY WERE, I MEAN, THEIR EYES WERE THIS BIG. THE STEWARDESSES, FOR AN HOUR AND A HALF, NOBODY EVER CAME BACK THERE. AND PEOPLE JUST VACATED. IT WAS A FULL PLANE. I DON'T KNOW WHERE THEY WENT, BUT FOR A NUMBER OF ROWS JUST VACATED IN FRONT OF US. AND I JUST LAID IT ON THIS GUY AND TOLD HIM, AND ANYWAY, BECAUSE OF THAT, I DON'T KNOW IF HE COULD HAVE BACKED UP HIS CLAIMS, BUT HIS CURSES AND HIS CLAIMS THAT HE COULD KILL ME AND DO THIS STUFF, IT HAD NO POWER WHATSOEVER BECAUSE I DIDN'T YIELD TO IT THROUGH FEAR. YOU SHALL KNOW THE TRUTH, AND THE TRUTH SHALL MAKE YOU FREE, IS WHAT JESUS SAID IN JOHN 8, 32. AND BECAUSE I KNOW THE TRUTH THAT SATAN COULDN'T FORCE ADAM AND EVE TO DO ANYTHING. HE HAD TO GET THEM TO QUESTION WHAT GOD'S WORD HAD SAID. AND HE GOT THEM INTO UNBELIEF, AND THEY DESTROYED THEMSELVES. THIS MAY NOT BLESS YOU RIGHT AT THE MOMENT, BUT IF YOUR LIFE IS OUT OF CONTROL, YOU'RE THE ONE TO BLAME. I'M NOT SAYING THAT SATAN HADN'T DECEIVED YOU. I'M NOT SAYING THAT HE HADN'T LIED, THAT YOU BOUGHT INTO LIES, BUT ULTIMATELY YOU HAD THE CHOICE. AND THE GOOD NEWS ABOUT THAT IS THAT IF IT'S YOUR FAULT BECAUSE YOU HAVE BOUGHT LIES THAT YOUR LIFE IS OUT OF CONTROL AND ALL THESE THINGS ARE HAPPENING, IF THAT'S TRUE, WELL, THEN THAT MEANS THAT YOU CAN ALSO REVERSE THIS PROCESS BY STARTING TO BELIEVE THE TRUTH. YOU WILL KNOW THE TRUTH AND THE TRUTH WILL MAKE YOU FREE, BUT IT'S ONLY THE TRUTH YOU KNOW THAT MAKES YOU FREE. WHAT YOU DON'T KNOW IS KILLING YOU. THIS IS THE REASON THAT, MAN, PEOPLE WHO KNOW GOD SEE GOD PROVIDE FOR THEM MIRACLES, HEALINGS. THEY HAVE JOY, THINGS LIKE THIS, BECAUSE THE TRUTH IS SETTING THEM FREE. THAT'S WHAT THIS TEACHING IS ALL ABOUT. I'M OUT OF TIME TODAY, BUT I WILL CONTINUE THIS ON MY PROGRAM TOMORROW. AND I ENCOURAGE YOU TO GET THIS. I'VE GOT CD'S THAT WERE MADE FROM A a TEACHING THAT I DID ON THIS. AND THEN I'VE GOT TWO SETS OF DVD'S, ONE TAKEN FROM TELEVISION AND ONE FROM ONE OF MY LIVE MEETINGS. AND I WOULD ENCOURAGE YOU TO PLEASE GET THIS MATERIAL AND STUDY IT BECAUSE THE TRUTHS I'M TALKING ABOUT ARE NOT WELL KNOWN, BUT THEY WOULD SET YOU FREE IF YOU KNOW IT. LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY. GOD'S PROMISES WILL BECOME MORE REAL AND ALIVE WHEN YOU GET ANDREW'S COMPLETE TEACHING TITLED, THE WORD BECAME FLESH. ANDREW'S COMPLETE TEACHING, THE WORD BECAME FLESH, IS AVAILABLE AS A CD OR DVD ALBUM MADE FROM OUR DAILY TELEVISION BROADCAST or in a DVD album recorded live at a ministry event. Each of these resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary is a combination of more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120.
You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Man, before I came to Karis, I was so broken. I dealt a lot with anxiety and depression. I didn't really realize I could have an actual relationship with God. When I came here, I started to see God like, you know, He just wants to have a relationship with me. It totally transformed the way I look at God. God longs to have fellowship with you. This is where faith comes from. It's not just head knowledge, Bible school knowledge, it's revelation knowledge that changes you just been set free from a lot of the bondage I was in. I haven't been depressed in so long. Pretty awesome having that just weight lifted and putting on Jesus' yoke. You come here and you meet God personally, and then He gives you a whole new direction. This is a time, this is a season of your life that God's wanting to show you who you really are and what He's wanting to do in your life. If you have a desire for Bible college, God's the one that put it there. If you're considering coming to Karis, I just want to say it's going to be one of the best decisions you've made in your life. You know, the Lord has given me a huge vision, and we've been blessed up to this point, but I've still got so much that God's leading me to do. I'm believing God for 10,000 new partners. We've already got over $120 million worth of buildings in just the last nine years, but I've got at least $100 million worth, maybe $200 million worth of buildings still in my heart for our students, for an activity center. We've got a new student housing that we've got a preliminary drawing of that is showing you a little idea of what it would look like. This one would house about 120 people. Our others are gonna be smaller with maybe somewhere around 40 people per dorm, but we need this student housing and we need people to become partners. I'm believing for 10,000 new partners. I would ask you to pray about it, and if the Lord says so, join with us and help us change people's lives through Karis Bible College. Excited. God is going to do something special during these meetings. God has put such a compassion in Andrew's heart to teach the truth. I'm telling you, in the spirit, you've got more power than the devil, more power than cancer, more power than poverty, more power than depression. You've got whatever it is that you need. We love it because we're here and we're enjoying it, we're seeing it, and it's making a difference thanks to people like Andrew Womack. Andrew's teaching and the love that he has for God's Word and truth. It is the gospel truth. Do you want to connect with like-minded believers? Then Karis Bible Studies is the place for you. Find a Bible study near you by visiting karisbiblestudies.net.